Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to show you how to repair a damaged or cracked air intake duct from your vehicle. And this is that piece that pretty much connects from your where the air intake goes through the air filter and then that whole duct piece that goes to your throttle body. That whole assembly there is what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to fix it. So what we're actually going to be dealing with in this video, we have um, this air intake duct right here. And a lot of times because of the kind of the material that's used, it's like a rubbery kind of rigid plastic. In time, they can develop cracks sometimes here where it's flexible or sometimes just here, just in general, they can wear out. Or in the case of the one that we're going to be looking at, you have this kind of this, this piece where it slides over the throttle body itself. And you can see right there and I'll get a close up. That right there is all worn down, and even though it slides over, the actual throttle body kind of goes right to about that point, you're still getting a vacuum leak right around it, so that's not good. So you want to make sure that you either repair or replace any kind of air intake pieces that have any kind of damage to them where you're getting air in, because otherwise you could be messing up with your, your vehicle's performance, because anytime you're dealing with a vacuum leak, you're getting too much air in, and it's going to cause performance issues in general. You'll have high idles. You'll have um, just in general where your engine will be running at too high of an RPM as a result, which could cause overheating, bad fuel economy, things like that. If you want to see a video I did on how to diagnose and how to find vacuum leaks, just a, a quick way. There's multiple ways, but I show a quick way to do it. You can check that out via the link above. So with this one here, the other option would be to replace it. But these things can be a couple hundred dollars to buy one of these air intake assemblies like this. So rather than do that, I'm going to show you a very inexpensive and effective way that you can just repair it and hopefully save you some money and get the job done. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the, the items that will be needed to complete this video. So these are the only items that you're going to need. You're going to need a roll of some self-bonding tape. You can pick this up. Walmart. Advance Auto, different places like that. It usually runs five or six bucks. It's very inexpensive. Then you're also going to need a tube of some black RTV silicone. You can pick this up also very inexpensive. And then just some kind of a metal ring or hose clamp that we can use to reinforce. In the case of the one that I'm working with, where you're dealing with the open mouth of the duct, you're going to need to reinforce it. If you're working with like a crack or damage along the actual duct itself you won't need to do that but for this one we'll need this all this together you're probably looking at no more than 10 bucks so it's a very inexpensive fix as opposed to spending a couple hundred to replace that whole whole uh, air intake piece now when you're working with this self bonding tape and I'm going to show you how to use it once we get into it but I just want to explain because what we're dealing with is this piece here so I'm going to be taking that metal ring and reinforcing that 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 radius edge because this self-bonding tape, since it doesn't have adhesive on it, you don't just apply it like duct tape or any kind of repair tape. You're actually going to hold it in place, stretch it out, and then wrap it onto itself. And then basically, it'll then cling to itself. And it creates a very strong bond. And if you put it around like, like this opening of the duct piece right here, like this mouth, what's going to happen is as you tighten it, it's going to start to squeeze it in, and then the problem you're going to run into is then now it's not going to fit over the throttle body, as it, as is with the case that I'm dealing with. So I want to reinforce it with that ring, so that way I can still stretch it over it without it adjusting this mouth right here, so it'll still fit. Now, if you were dealing with a crack along here, you wouldn't have that issue. So you would then just hold it in place, stretch it out, and go over and over again. And that should actually be sufficient. I'm going to use the black RTV silicone just to kind of reinforce the way I'm doing it to kind of seal it to make sure that no air can still slip in. That's just my own recommendation. You don't have to do that because this stuff here, I've used it before in dealing with, with um, duct work like this. This stuff is pretty good. It's very strong. So let's go ahead and I'll start showing you what we're going to do to prep it and applying this right here. First thing that you're going to want to do is you want to properly clean the area where you're going to be applying that because you, you don't want dirt getting in, in the loop with all that. So I'm going to go ahead and put some, some cleaner on here. We're going to wipe this down real good. So whatever area you're working on, clean that area very well before you apply that self-bonding tape. And then uh, we'll clean this and we'll be right back. We went ahead and let it dry after we wiped it down. 
some of the stuff you're seeing here is not dirt. That's actually just kind of scarring on the, the um, duct itself. But we have this metal ring. So in the case of this, because I need to reinforce it, I'm going to go ahead and cut these little, um, these little tabs off. But basically, I'm going to put a piece to kind of lay in there like that. So when we put the, the tape around it, let's see if I can turn it so you can see it. That way, as it tightens it, instead of it collapsing on itself, this is going to go ahead and keep that shape. So I'm going to snip these off with some, some shears. And then we'll be back to put that in place. And then we'll take the tape and I'll show you how you apply it. And like I said, for this one here, we're going over this, this ring to reinforce it. But if you were going over just a solid piece, you wouldn't have to do that. So when we come back, I'll show you that. Okay, so I went ahead, cut those ends off. So now when we put it on, it's about maybe three quarters. So it'll still wrap around. And as we tighten the actual clamp that goes over it to tighten around the throttle body itself, this will still have some flexibility to move like that to still tighten it. So we're not making it too rigid to where that can't be done. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go ahead and leave that there. We have the self-bonding tape. So you, you have this clear film that's on it. So you're going to go ahead and bring the one side. I'm going to take this off for now. Because if you were applying it to a straight piece like this, what you would do is lay the piece in, hold it in place, and this stuff is very stretchy. So you'll pull it out and stretch it out, and then wrap it around, peel the coating off so that way it can adhere onto itself. And when you loop it around, it'll start sticking, and then you can just keep going over and over to reinforce it. And what I would say to do, for example, Let's say like this seam line right here is the crack that you're trying to fill or, or, or trying to seal. Instead of just going over that crack, I would start maybe about a half an inch on the side of it and then just start overlapping it and then go about a half an inch on the other side of it. So that way it's going across the whole thing to really create a nice tight seal and bond. So that's how we're going to do this here. I'm going to start on this outer piece. We're going to work our way over that clamp all the way to the edge. And then once that's done, I'm going to put some of the black RTV silicone over it. But like I said, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. I'm doing it as just kind of some added added sealing to uh, seal that. So let's go ahead and get, get down with that. And now I'm just going to go ahead and take a knife and we're going to just cut that off right there. And then I'll get a close up so you can see how it looks, how it's all wrapped together. And then we'll go ahead and stretch this out. 
and then just apply it like that and that's on there and then if we look in here because of us putting that metal frame in there it didn't collapse on itself so it'll still slide over the throttle body itself and then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of black RTV silicone and just kind of go along the seam right here so that way there's no risk of any any vacuum leak it doesn't really need it I'll show you up close it, it, it's very tight but I'm just gonna do it as a precaution And you can see how tight that is. Um, I don't think any air would get in. So like I said, it's up to you if you want to seal it with silicone or not. Take the black RTV. I'm going to be focusing mainly around kind of that area where we patched. So we'll put a little bit of... And then we'll spread it out. Smear it over the seams. There we go. There we go. Just as an extra little seal. And there it is going all around it so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry and then we'll go ahead and reattach it to the throttle body and uh, see how it looks everything has been attached onto the throttle body and went ahead and tightened up on the mass airflow sensor everything is back in there but um, we're going to go ahead now and put the actual uh, hose clamp on there and tighten that up real good. And then we'll go ahead and start up the vehicle and uh, that should take care of the vacuum leak. Go ahead and tighten the hose clamp all the way. Get a nice tight bond. And we have that metal, that little ring reinforcing it in there. So that way we have that extra piece in there as well. Nice. There we are. Tightened up. Let's go ahead and fire it up. And the RPMs are actually looking really good. That is the normal range for this particular vehicle at idle. So that looks really good. Okay, as we saw there, everything sounds good. The RPMs are idling nice, not idling high, which would normally be indicative of a vacuum leak. Definitely not manifesting the issues it had before. Um, also, what we were running into before that I didn't mention at the beginning is also when we would accelerate, you would hear a little bit of kind of a high pitch noise from the vacuum leak sucking in. So that's all been taken care of. As we saw there, for around 10 bucks, we went ahead and fixed that air intake duct as opposed to replacing it and spending upwards of a couple hundred bucks. So I hope that this video was informative for you. I hope it helped you out with any projects you're working on. As always, I appreciate all the support. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, send me any comments. I'll see you next time.